Hello again everyone, Edwin Word back once again in this YouTube NFL Predictions segment. I'm going to be giving you my picks and analysis for week 5 of the 2020 NFL season. So let's get started. The first game is going to be a Tampa Bay at Chicago and I'm going to take uh, Tampa Bay in this one. Reluctantly, Chicago being at home, they played very well this season. They've obviously superseded expectations, at least I believe. But Tampa Bay has really looked like one of their teams in the NFL over the last uh, three weeks. They definitely have a daunting task, though, going to Chicago, Khalil Mack and, and company. Are they going? I mean, this will definitely be a test for them. They're on a short week. I understand that that generally is going to favor uh, the home team, but we really don't have as much the home field uh, advantage um, in, in contrast to what it's been uh, previously. That's something I like to research uh, later on and see what the home team's record actually is this season at this quarter point of the NFL season. But Tampa Bay with uh, I think Gronkowski is going to play well. I mean, Tom Brady is certainly playing better as the weeks progress. I think he's had at least one interception in each game, but he definitely has redeemed himself since that week one loss to New Orleans. And Tampa Bay has been resurgent since. Uh, I'm going to take the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the road in this one. Now, the next game. The next game, we got Carolina at Atlanta. Well, I mean, Atlanta... <laughs> They got to really play with some desperation and some urgency. I'm going to take them in this game. Um, it seems like when I uh, think a lot of these teams, uh, I'll, I'll keep giving them a chance and they leave, let me down, or I go against them and they surprise me. This is 2020. It's a very unpredictable season. But I'm going to go uh, with Atlanta in this one. Carolina is still... Uh, I mean, they, they are still ravaged with injuries, I believe, and you don't have uh, a number of their key players are not going to be on the team. Atlanta uh, in this game with Matt Ryan, I think this is the game where, I mean, this could be a season right here for them. They can't really fall too far behind in the standings too quickly. So I'm going to take Atlanta, given the desperation and urgency factor I believe they'll have in this game. Now the next game. I'm going to take, uh, well, Buffalo at Tennessee. I'm going to take Tennessee at home in this one. Again, very reluctantly, this uh, game could go either way. I saw some stat where, I don't know if you call it a stat, but it's more of a projection. But I think it's from ESPN that they gave uh, Buffalo 52% chance of winning. That just shows how well that Buffalo has played the season. The fact that they're going into Tennessee, Tennessee is undefeated. And uh, Buffalo is as well. Who would have thought? I mean, the, I know these teams were better than average going into the season, but that at, at this juncture of the season, their combined record would be seven and oh. I certainly didn't think so. Tennessee at home. I look for Derrick Henry to at least uh, play adequately against the Buffalo run defense. I understand that team. Buffalo may may not really have many weaknesses or, or on that team. But I, got, I have a feeling that Derrick Henry is going to at least pierce that run defense just enough to get the job done in this game. And Tennessee is at home. That's basically the tiebreaker. Both these teams have played very well. You look at Josh Allen on that Buffalo Bills team. I mean, they, they might, it's early in the season, and I know they had high expectations. But the fact they're 4-0 right now and two games up on New England just after, just after four games, I mean, Buffalo could really make some some noise they keep this thing they keep this thing going they could be a team that could really uh, they might go deep into this postseason but I'm gonna take Tennessee in a nail biter now the next game well, I'm gonna take the Chiefs at home against the Las Vegas Raiders some of you may have heard that Derek Carr the quarterback of the Raiders has been you know complaining about losing and I I understand he's an Aries. He's obviously very competitive. He's got a lot of fire in him. He's in passion. He don't like to lose. Nobody does. And he's going to be more vocal and outspoken about that than most people. But the problem is he's going to be probably even more tired after this week because the Chiefs should prevail in this one. The Chiefs, uh, interestingly enough, they, when they played New England last week, there was some talk on a first take about some vulnerabilities of this team. And, and Matt, Max Kellerman had countered saying, yeah, okay, they were vulnerable in this game, but they still won it. The point is the Chiefs are, you know, may have some defaults on their on the team. There's no you know, flawless team in the NFL. 
They are a team that's still very likely the best team uh, in the league. Yeah, Kansas City may have committed some call turnovers uh, last week, but they still played much better than New England, and they got the W, and that's what's going to count. They'll get this, they'll get this job done at home. Uh, Kansas City has won like 12 or 13 consecutive games going back to the 2019 season and counting the postseason of last uh, last NFL season. And I think they're going to keep this streak going. Kansas City is on the roll. I don't think it's going to stop against the Raiders. I'm going to take the Chiefs at home. Now the next game. Well, I got my, my lamentable Jets uh, at home against the Arizona Cardinals. And, I mean, the Jets right now, they just, you know, sadly, they can't get out of their own way. They're like the second worst uh, scoring offense team uh, in the NFL. Arizona may not have looked that impressive last week, but, I mean, almost anybody, sadly, is better than the Jets right now. And uh, the Jets, they just find manifold ways to lose, sadly. They, they actually may have played their best game of the season uh, last week when they played the Denver Broncos. I thought they had a decent shot of winning it. They let me down, and I don't want to make a mistake in picking them in this one. So I'm going to take Arizona to get this one done on the road. Now the next game. Well, I'm going to take the Steelers at home against uh, the Eagles. The Pittsburgh Steelers got a little additional rest due to the fact that that game against Tennessee was canceled last week. Philadelphia, yeah, they had an impressive win against the 49ers. That might be an aberration or a fluke. I don't know if they're going to be able to keep this going against the Steelers. The Steelers right now look like... Um, Obviously, a team that can really be reckoned with. Uh, ben Roethlisberger has played exceptional over those three games. They're 3-0 and right now. Philadelphia is still trying to find themselves at a team with as far as their identity goes. So I think um, looking at this... Uh, looking at this game, Pittsburgh and their defense, I think they get the job done. I want to take the Steelers to win at home. Now, the next game. Well, the next game, I mean... It's not, it, it is, can be tough because, I mean, it's going to be Washington. Washington is at home against the Los Angeles Rams. Yes, the Rams are, I'm sure, a much better team on paper right now. Washington's in a little bit of disarray. My understanding is, if I'm not mistaken, they're going to be making a quarterback change in this game. Maybe it'll help revive and rejuvenate them. But the Rams right now are the way they're constructed. I just think they're just a better um team uh, as far as their personnel just in general. Washington's in a little bit of disarray. They had that one very good week and that, that week one when they had like eight sacks uh, in that game. But after that, they have not really looked that great. And the Los Angeles Rams just are, uh, you know, their team, I think we can count on them to do more in this game than the Redskins. The Redskins, you know, as far as what they're doing and uh, an, another team with an identity situation that been going on, what are they going to bring in this game? I'm not really sure what the, if they can bring enough to defeat the Rams. And I like the Rams to win this one on the road. Now, the next game, I'm going to take uh, the Baltimore Ravens at home against the Cincinnati Bengals. Baltimore, I mean, maybe the Ravenous defense is coming back. Uh, I know they had that one game where they just did not look great against the Kansas City Chiefs. But the Kansas City Chiefs have a tendency to make all teams look look bad and inferior and including the Baltimore Ravens. The Baltimore Ravens are capable of beating just about any other team in the league with the exception of the Chiefs. Baltimore playing Cincinnati. Yes, I know Cincinnati uh, won last week. They have some swagger. Uh, Joe Burrow had a, uh, has been playing very well this season. Cincinnati might actually make this a little closer game than a lot of people anticipate, but the Baltimore Ravens are at home and they don't lose many regular season games unless they're playing the Chiefs, and it seems like. And uh, so I'm going to take the Ravens to get this one done at home. Now the next game. Well, next game, um, Jacksonville is at Houston. Now some of you may have heard they fired the head coach of uh, the Houston Texans. It's very shocking. They've started out a putrid 0-4 after making the postseason last year, they got to the second round of the playoffs. They finished at 10 and 6 last season, and there were some aspirations for this team, but they have plummeted since. Now we're going to find out if this new coaching hire is actually going to revitalize this team or not. And uh, Jacksonville coming in, I mean, I know the running back that they have is not, uh, you know, that has replaced Leonard Fournette has not been bad. The Jacksonville running game may be adequate actually, but. 
I think Houston right now, I mean, they're absolutely going to have to be in desperation mode. If four losses after four weeks into the NFL season, they can't afford to lose too many more. Otherwise, I mean, it's like a team that could be mathematically eliminated at the halfway point of the season, the way they're going right now. And in this game, I'm going to take the Texans uh, to get this one done somehow at home. I, they'll find some way to do it. It's, should, it's probably going to be a tight game, but the Texans, I believe, will pull this one out. Now, the next game, I'm going to take uh, San Francisco at home against Miami. I'm going to take the San Francisco 49ers. I do not know the status on Jimmy Garoppolo. He may or may not be playing, but uh, it, to me, if, uh, they, if Miami goes with Ryan Fitzpatrick, it will be probably, it could actually be a tight game, but uh, I think in this particular game, the 49ers at home, and uh, they may have you know, certain injuries to their team. Maybe they are decimated with injuries, but the 49ers still are, I mean, given that they're going to be at home, they still have the better team they, overall than the Miami Dolphins. The 49ers are still competitive. I, I'm not really sold on the Dolphins and what they're, uh, what they're going to be able to do this season. I still see the Dolphins as, as a below average football team. So I'm going to take the 49ers to get this one done. At home. Hold on a moment, people. Okay, now the next game. Well, the next game, I'm going to take the Cleveland Browns to win at home against the Colts. I mean, can you say resurgent Cleveland Browns? I do not expect them. I think they're three and one right now in the season, and do what they did to, to Dallas. Now, I understand Dallas's defense. This far from stellar. They're pro I don't know what the stats on them are, but Dallas, their scoring defense, I'm sure, is in that bottom five or six tier in the NFL right now. But Cleveland, I mean, their offense seems to have augmented uh, this season and, and been much better than a lot of people thought. They put up like 49 points last week on the Cowboys. They seem to be playing with a lot of confidence and energy and right now that they didn't have what, what we were seeing at, like at the end of last season. And the Colts right now, yes, they got Phil Rivers. They are. They have some swagger. They played well last week. But I like what I'm seeing with the Cleveland, uh, the Cleveland Browns offense more so than the Indianapolis Colts at this point. And the Browns are at home. The Browns are playing with renewed swagger. They're playing, again, with a lot of confidence, self-esteem. This is a team that this is what uh, people – uh, envision. I think a lot of people envision what the Browns were going to be last season. Now, for whatever reason, they seem to be coming together and playing more uh, cohesively. And I think everybody is just understanding their roles probably much better in contrast to last season. So I'm going to take the Browns to win this one at home. Now, the next game, I'm going to take the Cowboys at home against the New York Giants. And sadly, not to and I'm not denigrating my team, but I just have to be honest. Another one of my teams, the New York Giants, I mean, they're at the, like, the bottom of the NFL in scoring offense. I don't even think they're averaging 10 points per game. I think it's like 9 points something per game. And I don't know what's going on. This was a season where uh, Daniel Jones, I thought, was going to evolve and maybe come into his own as a quarterback. The Cowboys right now, I mean, they're 1-3. and three. They had uh, one, uh, one NFL uh, – analyst or commentator on ESPN, I forget his name, but he had stated something about that, that of all the teams in the NFC East, he still thought the Cowboys were the better team. Yes, the Philadelphia Eagles are in first place, and I think they're 1-2-1. One, and one. The Cowboys are 1-3, and three, but based on their personnel, and I'd say the offense, I would concur. I think the Cowboys likely are still the, barely the best team in the NFL. The Eagles may be a close second in terms of their personnel and their caliber. But the Cowboys right now, they have a remedy for their woes, and sadly it is my New York Giants. And uh, the fact is the Giants just aren't, uh, despite uh, the defense for Dallas looking somewhat abysmal in recent time, they are, uh, it's still going to, the Giants still, I don't think, are going to be able to, to put up enough points on that defense and keep up with the Dallas scoring. The Dallas Cowboys, I mean, are probably going to score at least 30 points in this one. And I just don't trust the Giants offense to get this, to, to surpass that or even hit 30 points. I think the Giants 
Giants are still going to be lucky, despite what may be seen as a deplorable defense on Dallas. The Giants will be lucky they even get 21 points in this game. So I'm going to take Dallas to win this one at home very, very decisively. I think they're going to win by at least two touchdowns in this game. Now, the next game, I'm going to take uh, New England at home against uh, the Denver Broncos. Now, now Denver might be, uh, you know, you look at the New England Patriots and they did not play, uh, did not play well last week. I don't know if they're going to have Cam Newton. Some of you may have heard about Cam Newton uh, getting that uh, COVID-19. But uh, even with a, with a backup quarterback, uh, with the Coyers going to play or whoever it's going to be, I think New England still can get this uh, get this done. I know Denver played very well against the Jets, but that was against the New York Jets. The New England uh, Patriots, uh, Bill Belichick is still, even if they don't have uh, Cam Newton at quarterback, they're going to devise you know, good defensive schemes and get this done uh, one way. Or another and they'll be able to contain the Denver Broncos offense I think that's going to be a key difference in this game uh, and I think you know after being two and two right now the Patriots don't want to go to two and three they don't want to fall too far back of, of Buffalo because I think Buffalo even though I'm predicting Tennessee will win that game they got almost an even chance uh, to win that game against Tennessee and it wouldn't shock me if Buffalo would win they go to 5-0. New England does not want to go to 2-3 and three and be three games behind the Bills at just after five games of the season. I think there's going to be some desperation and urgency with the Patriots. So I'm going to take the Patriots to get this one done at home. Well, now the next game, I'm going to, uh, Minnesota at Seattle. I'm going to take Seattle. Uh, at home, Minnesota did, uh, they go off the schneid, so to speak, last week. They did beat Seattle. I'm sorry, they beat the Houston Texans, but the Houston Texans are obviously, you know, they're playing like one of the worst teams in the NFL, right? Seattle, Seattle is one of the best teams right now, 4-0. Uh, there's a lot of talk about Russell Wilson and him being a top-tier uh, quarterback. I think he's got 16 touchdown passes right now on pace for 64 uh, for the season. He's played almost, you know, flawlessly. I mean, there's no infallible you know, player in the NFL, no perfect player, but he's about as close as you're going to get to throwing it for a very high uh, completion percentage. And also, I mean, and just throwing for a lot of yards, touchdown passes. He's got everything. He's got the scrambling ability. I think he is. Uh, I think he's unequivocally maybe the best closer in the game. The, the quarterback that's there that that you count on at the end of the game. I would say him and Aaron Rodgers are the two that come to mind that you want at that end of the game. If you're trailing in the fourth, late in the fourth quarter, and you're trying to get a score, whether it's to, to get in position to make a field goal or a touchdown to win the game, those are the two that come come to mind uh, for me, and I'm going to take Seattle to uh, get this done uh, at home. Now, uh, the last game, just got to see, I got to go down here for a minute, people, hold on, I'm trying to see what the last game is. For Monday night, uh, I'm going to take, uh, take the Saints at home against Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, Saints right now are, I think, are two and two. They've been kind of up and down. They're not. Uh, they don't seem as formidable as they were pre, like last season. But the Chargers are coming to town. It's going to be on a, a Monday night. Uh, Drew Brees and company. They got an extra day to rest in this one, and it's uh, and it's at home. So I'm looking at this as a as a uh, New Orleans Saints win. I don't know if Michael Thomas is coming back in this one or not. This is ob obviously that has made. A huge impact in terms of how the Saints have played. I think the Saints just barely got by in their win last week, but they still got the W. The Chargers right now are a team that can be competitive, but I don't think you know going into uh, New Orleans on a Monday night game. I think uh, Brees is going to flourish in this game. I think he's going to have a very uh, big day against the the Chargers uh, secondary, and I see them pulling. Uh, this game out in, in emerging victorious. So I'm going to take the Saints to get this one done at home. Well, anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube NFL prediction segment. Until next time, people, Edwin Learner saying stay well.